Welcome back to another episode of Maybe More Than You Needed to Know on a Monday. However, today we're going to talk about the exciting world of granulation tissue. We're keeping in time with tissue infection, moisture and edge, and I'm still talking about tissue types so that we can go through all of those and why they're so exciting to an NSWOT. So the granular tissue is really angiogenesis in action. Angiogenesis is just the formation of capillaries, so they pop up through the wound and they cover over. So you're seeing these little red bumps. That's actually the formation of new tissue and new blood flow to the area. So granular tissue like this is exceptional. This was um, a diabetic foot ulcer that did have a negative pressure wound therapy device on it and it's looking really, really great. We're seeing that granular tissue. Why we get so excited is that before epithelialization can happen or the formation of scar tissue, which is the third stage, we have to fill the wound. So this is nice red, beefy looking, and that's the, the exact color of tissue that we need to, to grow and fill the wound before we can get scar tissue formation and get wound closure, the most exciting part. Now, there are a couple of things that I will note about it. I'm going to show you another really, this is a really large abdominal wound um, that we had. It was actually due to a necrotizing fasciitis. But you'll see a lot of the bumps in here. Now, this was um, in preparation for um, a full thickness skin graft that was applied afterwards to actually get the, the wound closed. So you'll see that there's great amount of granulation tissue all along the edge and some is a little bit paler in between. So that's where some epithelialization is already starting to happen. But we'll talk about that a little bit further in another video. But again, this is the right color. So again, with videos and, and photos, it's, it's hard to tell sometimes, but this lovely red tissue is really what we're looking for. Now, when you come across a wound a little more with some mixed tissue, such as there's slough in the base and whatnot, this is one that definitely we're probably going to swab because we do have a lot of really good granulation tissue around the edge, but down in the base of the wound, we don't. So again, this is one that we're, that we're kind of on the fence about. There no, isn't a lot of redness around, but again, due to if you're noticing an odor, if you're noticing increased amounts of drainage compared to the wound size, always a good idea to swab those. Here's another great example of some really good tissue. There's nothing really in the base, so we know that this is going to continue to just fill and then new epithelial will crawl across. Now, one of the, the times that you're also going to see when you see pale granulation tissue, this is the bad kind of granular tissue. This usually also means that there is some sort of infection underlying. You can see around it, they did use some Acticote, so there's a bit of silver staining. However, this is definitely one that um, I'm also seeing some bone in the middle, so there's, there's likely you know, some other underlying osteomyelitis or something else that's happening that, you know, even though we're seeing some pink, doesn't mean that it's healthy. So we really want to find that healthy granular tissue. And last but not least, I also want to note hypergranulation. So hypergranulation is when the granular tissue grows over the surface, so over top, so it's actually higher than the rest of the skin. So this usually indicates, in this, in this instance, it actually indicates that there's an underlying abscess inside. Whenever I see hypergranulation, I'm always poking to see if I'm actually got any depth to it, because often it does mean that there's a pocket or something else that's causing that hypergranular tissue to occur. This actually occurs quite often with G-tubes and other devices when, they're, when there's tubes inside. Those, those tubes are hypergranulating usually because the tube is moving and that friction is causing the hypergranulation to happen. But if you are definitely over an incision line or something where hardware was put in and you're seeing hypergranular tissue, often that means that the screw is ready to come out. So sometimes we, you know, we can do our best to try to, to vacuum cover over it, but often that means that there's a structure underneath that the body's not liking or it's rejecting. It's a foreign body reaction. So again, when I seen this hand, when I first looked at it, the hypergranular tissue really prompted me to probe these. So if you're seeing hypergranulation in the wound, especially if it hadn't before, always make sure that you do probe them. There are different ways to get rid of hypergranulation. Uh, there is always a debate on the use of silver nitrate, but again, depending on the wound, as long as you're not probing into a pocket and you just have some hypergranular tissue, sometimes silver nitrate is a, a good alternative, but it can be painful, so you do have to warn the patient. Sometimes they don't tolerate it. Usually the burning or stinging only lasts about an hour, 
but it still can can be quite detrimental to them so please be aware so again if you're seeing hypergranulation that's another indication again either an abscess or there might be another underlying problem so again meet me next week and we'll talk about epithelialization which is our third stage in wound healing so we can still continue to go on about these tissue types and as you can see the progression and why we get so excited because they start to heal and the best wound again is a closed one take care